Good evening. I say good evening. Good evening. That's a little better. You're paying attention now. <laughs> um, if I could get you all to sit down and uh, get ready to enjoy a great evening tonight, uh, I want to welcome you. My name is Bob Harper. I'm the pastor of this church. Uh, we are pleased to have you here tonight. We've been looking forward to tonight uh, since the last one. This is the second annual Hometown Heroes Award Ceremony. And uh, can I say that um, you've been prayed for this morning. My East Michigan District Superintendent came for a surprise visit this morning, and he's prayed for tonight. We've been praying for this night. And uh, I just want you to rest and relax and enjoy the night. Pretend you're not in church, if I can say that. My ministerial alliance president is over here. I didn't get as big a laugh out of that as I thought I would. But. Um, if you can turn your cell phones off, that'd be a great thing right now. And also another reminder before we get going, when you come up to receive your award, can you just look up to the camera? You are being photographed tonight with the person who is giving you the award tonight. So if you can remember to do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'm so glad that um, this is going on tonight. And I'm so appreciative of, um, if I start naming names, I'm going to forget them all. So you know who you are who have helped me in the city, and what a pleasure it is to work with the people of the city of Romulus. This is a great town. And now I'm going to have uh, you stand to your feet, if you will, and would you welcome our invocation person tonight, Pastor Art Willis, and would you show him some appreciation also, as he goes on. I'm Pastor Al Willis. I'm pastor of Romulus Western Church. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, we are so grateful and we're so thankful for your amazing grace. We thank you, Master, for looking beyond all of our faults and seeing our needs. We thank you for Pastor Bob and the church family that's put on their heart once again to come to recognize some people that sometimes get little respect only when you need them. We thank you, Master, for this day. We thank you for this occasion. We ask, Lord, you bless every officer, every fireman, every city worker. We ask, Lord, you would give them the strength and the will to fight on in spite of. Pray for those that knew taking positions. Lord, we ask you to cover them with your blood, that you be able to take care of them. Pray for our new man. Give him wisdom. Give him knowledge and give him discernment. So many things will be thrown at him. But we know you have the power. Bless our new chief. Give him wisdom, Lord, when everything around him is going haywire, he'll be able to make the right decision. Because every officer feels that they can do the job better than they can do. I know because as a pastor, every member feels they can do it better than I can. But you only call one to lead. Be with these that are leading the people of God to the next level. Take care of their families, because when their families hurt, Lord, they hurt. Take care of their wives. The wives of them leave every day. Knowing, not knowing if they're going to make it back. But Lord, we ask that you put your shield around them. Protect their children, protect their wives, and protect their families. We give you the praise, we give the honor, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You remain standing for the color guard, please. <laughs>
Appreciation for the two girls who just did their <laughs> better put my cheaters on before I forget it. Uh, we have some dignitaries with us tonight that I'd like to introduce to you. Uh, the first dignitary, of course, is our brand new mayor, Mayor Leroy Burkroft. Our city clerk, Ellen Bragg. <laughs> Councilman Celeste Roscoe. <laughs> the troublemaker in my church, Stacy Page, our treasurer. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Harry Kraut, Councilman Harry Kraut, and his wife, Sandy Kraut. Judge Oakley. Another one of my favorites. Councilman Kathy Abdel. And Councilman Linda Cho. Very nice group, wouldn't you say that? If you can, give me a hearty amen. Amen. He is. Councilman Bill Wadsworth. <laughs> and another, uh, what is our state representative, Doug Geis. <laughs> is there anybody else? <laughs> um, Thank you. 
Back in 1964, the late Dean and Shirley Bergroff had no clue that their newly born son would one day become the elected mayor of the city they both came to love and call home for many, many years. Although they were not around to physically share in the big election victory, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that they were both looking down and celebrating in heaven as proud parents whose responsible upbringing, support, wisdom, and community service paved the way for their son's successful election night victory. Mr. Dean Burkroff, a Navy veteran, a volunteer Romulus firefighter, and a local business owner, along with his wife, Mrs. Shirley Burkroff, a Romulus school teacher and homemaker, instilled the core values of hard work, integrity, commitment, compassion, and community service in our new mayor throughout his upbringing. Leroy, a lifelong Romulus resident, was very active in school and sports, serving as his high school class president, as well as playing on the varsity baseball and wrestling teams, and finding time, obviously, to date and eventually marry his high school sweetheart, Geraldine King. After high school, he took an entry-level position at the company's bearing services and ended up making a very successful career out of it by working his way up to vice president's position within the company. While working full-time and helping raising his three children, Leroy still found the time to give back to his hometown by serving on many vol volunteer initiatives. He has served our community as a planning commissioner, city council member, chairman, and board member on the Romulus Boys and Girls Club, founder of the Romulus Clean Sweet Program, and he's an active member of the Community United Methodist Church and our Chamber of Commerce. Will you please show your affection for our brand new mayor, Leroy Burkroft. Hi everybody, welcome to the second annual Hometown Heroes. Good to be back here and thank you to Pastor Bob uh, and the committee who put the uh, event together. I've been looking forward to this for a while and it's great to be able to recognize people that are doing good work. Um, I took a, a shot at looking up hero, what the definition of hero was, and I found a pretty good one I wanted to share with you. Um, it says, to me a hero is anyone who has the courage to step up when they are needed, standing up on behalf of another person, doing an act of kindness, with no expectation of accolades or awards. And I thought that was a pretty good one, because we have a lot of heroes in our community. Um, one thing that we're doing th different this year, the, the first annual Hometown Heroes was primarily public safety, police and fire. Uh, we wanted to include other departments, so what you'll see tonight is we have public safety awards, but we also have departmental awards. Uh, we kind of put that together fast and furious. Uh, our hope is that next year we'll have more employee involvement in selecting those, but I think we've got some outstanding people here tonight that we need to recognize and look forward to doing that as well. Um, we have we have heroes. If we, we try to recognize all the heroes throughout our community, we'd be here for two days because there are a lot of people that do a lot of good work day in day out. And I've had a great opportunity, even in my uh, short stay as mayor, but even the years as council, to see some of that firsthand. Uh, so what you're seeing tonight really is a snapshot of some heroes that are out there. Um, to me, heroes are people that are providing outstanding customer service in some way, shape, or form. Uh, if, if you know me or what uh, I believe in and the way I was raised from my parents was uh, serving others and providing outstanding service as you. And uh, really what you're going to hear tonight and see some awards are just that. Uh, providing outstanding service and doing it without even expecting recognition. But it's nice to be able to uh, recognize that recognition here tonight. You know, the uh, customer service that we talk about is internal and external, and you'll hear some things tonight that reflect that. A lot of times people think that heroic efforts or um, outstanding efforts are just external to the citizens or to businesses or so forth. Maybe I'm blocking that one. There it is. Um, I think it picks up down here. I was covering it. Uh, but internal customer service is just as important. Internal customer service are people doing outstanding acts within departments, helping each other out. You'll hear some of that as well. So don't just think of outstanding service as just external only. You know, our city's not just about streets and buildings and cars or in Romulus airplanes, for that matter. Um, what, the, what the community is about is people, and it's about people and their character. And uh, what you're going to hear tonight are some opportunities to have people express 
where, where individuals have stepped up and shown courage and shown character in many different facets of their, of their job and through their workplace. And uh, I just want to bring that short message, and we have a big program tonight, so what I'd like to do is just end my message with a short prayer, and then we'll get on with the, uh, the program. If you would bow your head, since we are in church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be here, to be here and to do your work. Lord, we ask that you continue to guide us and direct us, uh, help us discern uh, our path and, and make it a righteous path. Lord, we ask that you protect our families while we are serving our community. Watch over them. Keep them healthy and safe. And Lord, we ask that you watch over, if it be a firefighter, police officer, DPW worker, or clerk, we ask that every, all their actions, day in and day out, Lord, are pleasing in your eyes. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is one of my favorite moments of the program. We get to hear our city clerk, Ellen Bragg, give a special number and dedication to all those who are receiving the award tonight. Blue one, it's out. The blue one's out? Okay. We'll talk for just a minute. <laughs> I like to sing and not talk. <laughs> Best ways plans, uh, while they're getting the extra mic, uh, we're trying to use technology in the iPad and wouldn't go through the sound, but uh, the song I selected this evening, um, it's a favorite of mine, but it says you'll never walk alone. And that I would like to dedicate that to everyone that's receiving um, the award because you so deserve it. And I think it's already been said that Romulus is a great town, and what makes our town so great because we have great people, and you make our town great. So let's give our city a hand. All right, we're going to try this and see. If not, I'll have to sing it a cappella. Drink water. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a sweat. Okay. But again, I'm honored to be here, and we're going to try and make sure that this works for you. But to all of you, again, I dedicate this song to you. You'll never walk alone. When you walk through the storms, hold your hand.
just want to. Do you want to sing it again? For those of you who don't know, she sings in uh, the Romulus Wesleyan Church Choir. I call it that. But there's probably four or five churches represented in that choir. And we do Christmas cantatas and Easter cantatas, and she sang at Christmas with us. And uh, I get fired up when she sings. I don't know about you, but I do. Amen? Amen. Okay. Captain Monica Yesh serves as commander of the Michigan State Police 2nd District, where she's responsible for all uniform and investigative operations in Oakland, Macomb, and Wayne counties. Captain Yesh enlisted with the department in 1987, graduating as a member of the 102nd Trooper Recruit School. Over her 25-year career, she has held the ranks of Trooper, Detective Trooper, Sergeant, Lieutenant, First Lieutenant, and Captain. Captain Yesh graduated from Michigan State University with Bachelor's in Criminal Justice in East Michigan with a Master's in Information Technology. She is a graduate of the FBI National Academy, Session 216, and Eastern Michigan University Staff and Command. She is a Hastings native, but makes her home in Farmington. Would you please give a Romulus warm welcome to Captain Monica Yes. Uh, the young gal who sang the national anthem, uh, you and I have a lot in common, but it's not singing. <laughs> I, don't, I can't sing and I don't have, I can't dance, so. Um, it's actually an honor to be here today. Um, I've, uh, I've been in this area, and by the way, I started when I was 12, if you put those years together. Uh, well, you don't try to guess how old I am. Because um, I've been around a while. Judge Oakley? Where's Judge Oakley at? Remember me? I'm your worst nightmare, I'm standing up here, aren't I? <laughs> had a lot of meetings with Judge Oakley, he's a great guy. Um, I, I started out as a trooper in Flat Rock, and so I've been in this area for 21 out of my 26 years total, I've lived in this area, and I am so honored to be here today, because I believe in the city of Romulus, and I believe that the people in this room is going to take Romulus to the next level and keep them moving forward. So it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Mayor Burkhoff, I, I'm very honored to be here. City Council, thank you for letting me come here today. Uh, Chief Allison from the Fire Department, State Representative Doug Geis, thank you um, for everything that you do for the state of Michigan. Um, last but not least, John Leacher, who I believe, uh, I believe in 100%. I've known John Leacher for a very long time. Uh, that man is in full integrity and full of honor. So thank you for asking me to come here to speak tonight. We're here for awards, and it seems to me throughout all of our careers, no matter what you do, uh, what we hear are negative things. Uh, Captain Yesh, your trooper was rude to me on 94. Uh, Captain Yesh, your trooper gave me a ticket and I didn't deserve it. It's usually negative things, and this is an opportunity tonight to honor those who have gone above and beyond what is expected of them. And I think that it's so important to recognize the efforts of our the people that do that, because without them, we don't exist. So, for whatever it's worth, please understand that these people don't go out here and say to themselves, you know what, I'm gonna go out and investigate this heinous crime or whatever it is that I do so that I can get an award later. We don't ever think of that. But it's very nice and it's very deserving to make sure that they get the recognition they do for going above and beyond for the citizens of the city of Romulus. Service to the public, what it means. To me, and that's what I chose to do. I can't remember a time in my life uh, that I didn't want to be in public service. And that's uh, specifically for me, public safety. Uh, I remember growing up, um, probably never heard of Hastings, but it's on the west side of the town, or state, and there's never been a time I didn't want to be a police officer. Um, I always wanted to help people. For some reason, that bug hit me when I was at a young age. I remember I worked at McDonald's, and uh, there was a really big fight out in the parking lot at McDonald's. I was 16 years old and they called the police for the fight. The state police showed up, and they were extremely professional, and they took care of business. And I said to myself, I'm gonna be a state trooper. And I graduated from high school, went to college, and became a state trooper. 
um, because I believe in service to the public. People sitting in this room who are getting awards tonight, they believe in service to the public as well, whether it's uh, public safety, whether it's uh, working at City Hall, whether it's working in human resources, uh, working for uh, Department of Public Works. You gotta believe in the, in the service or in the citizens that we serve. And if you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't. Along with that, as I say, when people come to me and they want to be a trooper or they want to be a sergeant or a lieutenant or an inspector or whatever it is, see, with rank comes responsibility. And there's a responsibility to the citizens that we serve. If you join public service, you have a responsibility to the citizens we serve because the residents of Romulus deserve to have the very best. And that's what it's all about. And these awards help recognize the very best. Along with responsibility is accountability. Okay, there has to be accountability for everything that we do because your residents deserve that. They pay their taxes to have a safe home. They pay their taxes to have their streets clean. They pay their taxes to have uh, the services provided to them and that's what we're here for, is to make it safe for them. But along with that comes accountability and I believe in accountability. I believe that you hold people accountable for what they do and what they don't do. Because if we don't have accountability, then unfortunately, you know what happens? The state police comes and investigates your police department for something that it shouldn't have been doing. And whether you agree with that or don't agree with what's going on, the trials start in the next couple of weeks. And we guys, as a city, have to put that behind you. Those dark days are gone, I guarantee it. Because you have a chief of police here, and you have a mayor, and you have a chief of staff that believes in the city of Romulus, and what he wants to do, that mayor does, and those, that chief and that chief of staff, they want accountability back to their citizens. They want their citizens to believe in them and trust that the government's gonna do the right thing for them and you don't have to worry about corrupt people anymore. And that's where you're at today. And I didn't wanna not bring that up because it's there. You know, it's there. And bless Chief Leacher's heart for still having me here because we did the investigation and I give you guys all the credit in the world for having someone come in and do that investigation. Thank you. You can clap. I've only got another couple hours and we'll be all set. <laughs> you told me I could take as long as I wanted. Okay, I was born in the city of Hastings. <laughs> we talk about turning a new page, moving forward. Some observations of my, that I have made of what's going on in the city of Romulus is you elected a genuine, sincere person. And you know what? Um, I have two uncles named Leroy. I'm sure you're not one of them because you're my age. <laughs> but you elected someone who's sincere and someone who believes in the city of Romulus. And that's a, that's a good turning of the page. Okay? Um, what I've also observed is Chief Leacher. Okay? I've observed him wanting to do the right thing all the time. That man has never not done the right thing. And you have to do the right thing when no one's watching. Okay, and he does. He has integrity. Um, if there's something going on in the police department, he holds people accountable. You have to start with the small stuff, because if you don't start with small stuff, it always gets into big stuff, always. And that's what he's doing with your police department. He's trying to make it a safe city for you and hold people accountable, and also recognize those who do things for the right reasons. Another thing he did, are there ladies here from the Detective Bureau? from Romulus Police Department. Where are you at? Three ladies? First thing I'll say is probably the most organized section you have in the entire city because you have three women in charge. <laughs> the multitasking you guys do on a daily basis puts everybody to shame. God gave us that gift. God gave us that gift as a mom. He gave us that maternal stuff, but it works in our job. I know it does because I can multitask and I bet you can too. So smooth move on your part there, Chief. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is my story. You know, I already told you that um, I've always wanted to go into public safety. I always wanted to be a trooper. I can't remember a time I didn't want to help others. There are three things in life that I've done that I feel have made me successful. And I heard them telling you I'm responsible for Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County. Um, I'm going to tell you something. That, that's, a, that's a big uh, step. Um, never in my right mind did I ever dream that I would do that when I was a road trooper. Uh, as a road trooper, I just I wanted to go out and do the job and provide service to the public, help people. 
Never did I ever think I would be a captain in the state police. I just wanted to solve crime and put bad people in jail. Um, I don't know, this is going to tell you how old I am, but I always wanted to be like Cagney and Lacey. I wanted to <laughs> take 60 minutes, solve a crime, put the bad person in jail. But Cagney and Lacey was like, that's who I wanted to be. Um, but here I am today as a captain. There are three things that I've always done. I feel that I have courage. I have courage, A, to get up in front of a public audience, which a lot of people won't do. Um, but I'm just kind of kidding on that one. We get a joke, but that's okay. You don't have to laugh at everything I say. Um, courage. You have to have courage in this job as a public service person. And if you don't, um, I, I don't know how you succeed. Because you have to have the ability and the courage to address the issues that need to be addressed. You have to have the courage to go and be uncomfortable sometimes and do things that aren't as comfortable. You have to have the courage to investigate a crime, a heinous crime. Um, you have to have the courage to tell someone they're not right or believe in what you believe in and stand up for yourself. Courage is extremely important in succeeding. The second thing is preparation. You have to prepare yourself. You know, I, I graduated from high school. I got my um, bachelor's degree from Go Green, Go White. I got my, my master's degree from Eastern Michigan. Um, I prepared myself from an educational standpoint. But what I also did is along the line, I tried to be as diverse as I could throughout our agency. I wanted to learn as much as I could about what the state police does and how I can help others. And I prepared myself every single day to go into work, um, to face whatever was facing me. So I used preparation. The last thing is caring. You know, people can tell when you care and when you act like you care. And I always tell people at work, swear to God, sometimes I wish I just didn't care because my life would be so much easier. I mean, it would. I mean, if you think about it, if you don't care, then it doesn't bother you that your trooper just did something, or it doesn't bother you that this lady was, was uh, sexually assaulted. It doesn't bother you. But caring is one of the most important leadership qualities anybody can have, and it doesn't matter whether you're uh, in public service, or excuse me, if, if you're in uh, public works, whether you're in city hall, whether you work in human resources, the police department, the fire department, no matter what it is in life, caring is to me the most important attribute that you can have to be a successful person or leader. So those three, three things have gotten you through life. Courage, preparation, and caring. And, and I can tell you right now that I wouldn't be standing up here today if I didn't believe in those three things. The last thing I want to talk about is the mayor. Um, I don't know him. I've never met him till, till tonight. Um, I've read about him. I've heard about him. Um, but what I do know about you is that you are trying to regain the trust of the residents of Romulus. And you're going to do that through teamwork. I saw that. Um, you're going to do that through um, transparency, even though transparency seems to always be that, what word that, the word of the day. But I believe that. I believe that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to regain the trust of the citizens of Romulus. And with the city council you have, it appears to me, I look at them, and a couple of you, I, I, you look familiar to me, but I'm going to tell you, I think you got the right team in place. You got the right team in place with Robert Dickerson, who I think the world of. He started something, and, and Chief Leach are there to finish it up. And I can tell you right now that you're, gonna, you're on your way to moving the city forward and putting those darker days behind you. So with that said, well, I, I did, I, does, that, does anyone know what, uh, that this was, was an underground railroad shop? Yes. yes. And uh, you had another one um, at the Samuel Kinsley home. I don't know where that's at. Um, but it's interesting because wherever I go, I try to read a little bit about the cities that I go to or wherever I'm going to give a little speech to. And uh, it's interesting to learn what we really have in this state. And Romulus is a blue-collar town. And gosh, I love blue-collar people uh, because that's what I am. Um, I grew up in a farming community, but blue-collar. And I love the fact that Romulus is a blue-collar worker, a working city. And I think that you are, um, you're bright, your days are brighter ahead. Um, you have 27,000 residents. And that's a big undertaking. Uh, I grew up in a town of 8,000, so 27,000 people. And I think the chief or the mayor here is going to do a great job of making you happy. Um, with that said, um, congratulations to all the award winners. Thank you for letting me come here and say a few words. I appreciate that. And as your motto say, with pride, with unity, Romulus is going to be the city it should be. Thank you. I just wanted to say that um, I really appreciate Captain Yash Monica coming out and addressing us this evening. <clears throat> um, I'm sure you found listening to her speak, much like our mayor, she's a very sincere person and she is truly that caring person that 
She says she tries or wishes she wasn't sometimes. Um, the first time that I met her uh, was, uh, was dealing with uh, a chief's organizations where she truly took everything that we believe is good about our profession and about the state police, especially the pride, the integrity, the courage, the honesty, the, the whole honor piece, the getting, reaching out, and she took that out to all the communities that she truly believes that she serves. Um, so I hope that you saw that in her, and, and I appreciate her coming here. She's a consummate professional and, and, and a, a probably one of my closest friends. Um, so in honor of um, that pride and integrity and that wonderful university that she attended for her undergrad <laughs> degree, um, we have a parting gift for her in honor of the Sports Victorious uh, uh, effort at the 100th Rose Bowl. Uh, this plaque uh, shows the 100 Rose Bowl Spartan Pride 2014 champions. I really don't want to alienate anyone, but are there U of M people in here? <laughs> Say hello to Bill Connors who just showed up tonight. Well, we've now moved into the award presentation part of the evening, and the first up to present awards to you tonight will be our new mayor, Leroy Burgroff. Thank you, Captain, for that awesome uh, speech from the State Police. You know, um, it's proud to be here and know that the State Police are here for a good reason. We're blessed to have you here. Thank you. Um, it's, it's my privilege to be able to uh, present some awards for uh, several of the other areas, and we'll get into public safety after that. When I call your name, if you could, please come up, stand here. So I'll start making your way forward as I uh, have a little description of some of the folks that we're going to recognize here tonight. And then we do want to give you your plaque. Uh, remember, if you could, to take a, a look upstairs where the cameras are so they can get a good picture of you. Um, first, I'd like to start with, uh, we have an employee, Christy Brewer. Uh, Christy would come forward. Christy is a Tech One. Uh, give her a round of applause as she comes forward. <laughs> Christy, she's a Technician One. Uh, she's been employed by the City of Rollins for 17 years. She's worked her way into coordinating the stock material supply. Uh, for all the DPW departments and aiding the motor pool division with many of its daily functions. Uh, Tom Wilson made the statement that she's always willing to go the extra mile to search out uh, details for us. So thank you very much, Christy, for that. Um, next up, Debbie DeMoise. Debbie, if you come forward, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Debbie is a quick two, and she's been employed with the City of Ramos for over 13 years. Uh, Debbie's worked as the, the uh, Department of Public Works front counter, uh, greeting residents, uh, uh, dealing with issues that are service-related issues, and always doing it with a smile. Uh, Debbie takes special pride in making sure that our residents feel that they have a positive experience with our department. Uh, everyone's always greeted with that warm smile uh, and very cheery, hi, how can I help you? Uh, Debbie has a big heart, uh, volunteers in many different community-sponsored events like Goodfellows, to name one. Uh, also orchestrates programs for her favorite uh, men in the armed forces, which we appreciate. Uh, Debbie is well known for her dependability, her willingness to help, uh, which often leads uh, her to alternate departments uh, and required, requiring assistance in different areas throughout the city. Uh, thank you very much, Debbie, for your excellent personality and your dedication to the city. And I never know where I'm going to see Debbie because she is also in a different department. So thank you, Debbie. Congratulations. <laughs> Everyone's giving you a plaque, uh, by the way. Also, uh, Pastor Bob uh, and John Leach are, are helping out. They have a uh, uh, last ounce of uh, uh, courage. It's time to take a stand video that they are getting as well, too. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, next uh, up is uh, Jenny Goodell. Uh, she's here with the report. Congratulations. Jenny Goodell has been employed by the City of Rollins for over 30 years. She began her service in the community in 1980 as a clerk in the Treasurer's Office. Shortly afterwards, she was transferred to the Finance Department, 
Uh, fortunately for us, she found her true calling when she found her home in the Department of Building and uh, Safety, uh, whereas, uh, where we're very fortunate to have her today. Uh, Jenny is a consummate team player with a work ethic that is, uh, is above all, uh, always the first one to assist coworkers whenever possible uh, for uh, whatever minor detail items they may have, but she's always willing to help and go beyond with her expertise. Uh, Jenny will never back down from a challenge in the workplace uh, for attacking new responsibilities, heading on, no matter what the size of the task may be. Her loyalty lies not only to the uh, uh, Department of Building and Safety, but also to the entire city. Her phones often ring nonstop with questions from other staff members throughout the city in different departments who are trying to utilize her vast knowledge for city operations. Jenny also is an example for all workers to follow and learn from, not merely by the scope of knowledge, but by her work ethic. Uh, always want to ask, what else can I do to help? Or how can I, be, how can I better serve you, is another thing you'll hear from Jenny. Uh, her, her delicate touch and incredible customer service skills uh, has calmed most of the interesting contractors that often that we interact with at the city with the slightest effort. Uh, by stepping up into any task before, Jenny's efforts have been instrumental in saving the city of Ramos over $300,000 in recent years, uh, and all of satisfaction of knowing her job has been well done. Uh, she definitely is what we would call irreplaceable, and uh, I call her kind of the glue that holds that building department together. So congratulations, Jenny. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. Next up, Mr. Dwayne Parker. Is Dwayne here? Put him on the floor. Dwayne's an equipment operator. He's been employed with the city for uh, 23 years. Dwayne is one of the most dependable operators in the city water department. Uh, his number one uh, job is restoring water service during water main breaks. Besides efficiency, Dwayne shows extreme trustworthiness and loyalty to the city, responding to nearly any emergency call from the department. Another personal trait of his, his, his work ethic, and also he has a passion for uh, preventative maintenance of the city's water and maintenance infrastructure. In his spare time, he's an avid outdoorsman who likes to recharge his batteries and return to the DPS. Thank you, Dwayne, for your dedication to the city and your commitment uh, to restoring the water services to our residents in all weather conditions. And he's also, by the way, the uh, employee that I mentioned a couple weeks ago at a council meeting, Christmas Eve, he and another group of members were out uh, fixing a water main so families could have water uh, during their Christmas day. So congratulations to one of them. <laughs> Dwayne will be signing autographs later. <laughs> Next up is Roger Staten Sr., please. Can you see him? Truly, Roger State Senior has been employed with the City of Ramos for 25 years. Roger is one of our senior operators who has uh, honed his craft with several pieces of our excavating equipment. Uh, working on the Rose Crew, Roger's work ethic and uh, ingenuity has allowed him the experience to work in all areas, including assessment rating of the city's road system via the computer input and the star debut in the department's snow emergency video, which you saw on my cable recently. Uh, Roger's extremely dedicated to the city and his excellent work ethic has led him to, to the standards of one of the most outstanding individuals that you'll see in the department. This, in part, is a product of his own discipline by his acceptance of the initiatives of the City Works Computer Management Work Order System, entering his daily work systematically, which means a lot to us from a tracking standpoint. Thank you, Roger, very much for your dedication to the department and for raising the bar for our city workers. Get used to smiling for cameras. <laughs> Let me sign autographs too. He is in the video, the public, so he did a great job. Thank you, um, I understand Sheila Stewart is not here, but I'm going to read hers as well and make sure when you see her to uh, give her a pat on the back. Uh, she is Department of Public Service Clerk. Sheila Stewart uh, has worked for the city for over 33 years. She started her service in, in 1980 and uh, in the actually in the Recreation Department, we're serving until 2010. 
Uh, she then transferred to DPW shortly after her arrival in DPW. She was once again reassigned to work as a clerk in both DPW and the Department of Building and Safety. Uh, uh, never having any negative attitude, she always showed up, did an out outstanding job. So make sure when you see Sheila, you thank her and give her a pat on the back as well. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> Next up is Jim Oginka. Give Jim a round of applause. Jim has served the City of Ramos for over 33 years. He began his service to the City of Ramos in 1977 as a laborer at a DPW. Jim's work ethic and ability to learn new responsibilities helped to elevate him through the rank of DPW to a position of Inspector Coordinator. In 1988, he was once again promoted to the Department of uh, Building and Safety as a Building Inspector. Uh, Jim's thirst for learning and his keen attention to detail has helped him become an integral part of the building inspector process. Jim continues his education in the building and trades to stay current on the latest safe construction practices so that he can better assist the citizens around us. Jim is invaluable in his oversight of the construction of Detroit Metro Airport. While stationed at the airport, he was responsible for the building inspection process for the McNamara Terminal which while under construction was the single largest construction project in the United States. Jim has always shared his knowledge of commercial construction with his fellow building inspectors by assisting them with a plan review as well as a code interpretation in order to help them become more efficient inspectors. Jim is a very reliable and dependable member of the building department staff and always looking for ways to improve service to the community. When I was out just recently with Jim out at the airport, one of the contractors had notated that Jim, and I didn't know this till I did some kind of job shadowing, that he often would go out and inspect jobs on his own time if they were in a tight timeline. And tell me that's not government working hard for you. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, Lynn Conway. Give Lynn a round of applause. Director Lynn Conway has been employed with the City of Ramos 21 years. Lynn has an amazing capacity for detail in her work. She has been instrumental in the completion of many special projects for the City and most recently assisted the Charter Review Commission in their endeavors to update the Charter's purchasing language. Many, many don't know that Lynn is also an amazing fine artist and many of her characters have put smiles on all of our faces. She's also a long-standing member of the Ramos Arts Council. She's known not only for her commitment to the arts, but her sense of humor also. Lynn has also served for many years on the Pumpkin Festival Committee and is also responsible uh, for the collage that you see in the center of that brochure with all the pictures in the Pumpkin Fest uh, guide. Lynn has also been uh, the treasurer of the Romulus Goodfellows for many years. Lynn's strong sense of community service, compassion for her fellow man, and dedication to making Romulus a brighter place is what truly makes her an asset to the community. Thank you very much, Lynn, for all your efforts and dedication to make to make Iranus a better place. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Mary Drew. Come on, Mary. <laughs> Senior Secretary Mary Drury has been employed in the city for over 10 years. Mary works with both Economic Development Department as well as the DDA and CDBG Department, which includes helping to plan and orchestrate the annual DDA Pumpkin Festival. Uh, Mary has a very strong work, work ethic, takes special pride in everything that she does, and everything that she does is done well. Uh, Mary is very well known for being organized, dependable, kind, and always has a smile for you. Uh, Mary is always willing to volunteer her time for projects, programs in the community throughout the year. Uh, Director uh, Maria Lambert says that all of Mary's wonderful qualities, one being the best thing working for Mary is that she can actually read minds. I don't know if you knew that. So be careful what you're thinking out there. Uh, is that basically she said, think about it, think about something, and Mary already has it done. Uh, Thank you very much, Mary, for your dedication, your excellence to the, our community and to the public and for all that you do. And I really appreciate it. When I come in that department, she has one of the biggest smiles on her face, and she's always willing to help with, with whatever you need. And that means a lot. Thank you, Mary.
Next up, Jennifer Freyer. Come on up, Jennifer. Give her a round of applause. Senior bookkeeper Jennifer Freyer has been employed with the City of Ramos for 22 years. Uh, Jennifer is a dedicated employee, always willing to go above and beyond to get the job done. Jennifer is known throughout the community for not only her work ethic as an employee, but her, for her commitment to community service. Anytime there's an event in the city, work or personal, Jennifer is sure to be working behind the scenes to make it happen. Jennifer is generous, kind, very energetic. She is known unofficially as the party planner uh, for employee events. Uh, Jennifer has also overseen the employee adoptive family program for many years, which has included collecting and in many cases shopping to fulfill the wish list of families in need in the community during the holiday season. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for all your dedication and excellent public community service. And I tell you, she did a heck of a job. We had the first uh, employee Christmas party. We got all departments together. And guess who was the chairman of it? Jen. Thank you, Jen. Good family there. Because next up is Jerry Fred. Jerry Fair has been employed with the City of Ramos for 16 years. Uh, Jerry is the first person that the residents see when they enter the City Hall. Uh, when they come in at Interest Way, he's right there on the right, uh, always with a smile looking to, to help out. Uh, and actually, in many days, Jerry's been the first employee at City Hall as well. I can vouch for that at 7 a.m. Uh, Jerry handles the day-to-day -day operations of the front counter in the Water Department. Jerry's always willing to put the customer first and goes above and beyond to help. Being the guy who answers calls regarding water bills, and in particular shutoff notices where they aren't, aren't always fun, uh, may not be the most popular job, but Jerry does it and does it very well and, sort of, and it actually brings a very calming situation to the, to the forefront. Uh, he's compassionate, he's willing to listen, even when the customer's not really happy at times, especially during shutoffs. Jerry's also very well known throughout the community for his many years in coaching multiple youth athletic programs in the community. But Jerry's also been a very giving of his time and his DJ skills for many charitable events throughout the years. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for all your dedication and excellence to the public and community service. And I can tell you, he, he is there at 7 a.m. in the morning. In fact, it was just last week when we had the snow, uh, there was a co-worker in need that was stranded uh, from a um, excessive snow in the driveway. And guess who went to offer to go pick her up? And that was Jerry. So great job, Jerry. Next up, Lois Gilstorf. Come on up, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Human Resource Assistant Director Lois Gilstorf has been employed uh, for the city for 40 years, started when she was two. Lois is a set of honors at City for seniority. She must have begun very, very young, as you, you know, she's, she's, she could tell the stories over the years. She's actually shared with me some things, how things have changed over the years. Uh, she's well known, known also for her strong work, work ethic, attention to detail, willingness to always get the answer no matter what the question is. Lois has spent a career working on behalf of her fellow employees. Lois worked many years in payroll department prior to taking a promotion to human resource department where she continues to assist the city employees. Lois is known for her endear endearing smile and her engaging laugh. You can't help but laugh when, when Lois starts you laughing. Lois is well known for always having the answer to difficult questions. And thank you very much, Lois, again, for all your dedication and excellence to our community. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Rose Swedan. Give Rose a round of applause. Senior Services Director Rose Swedan has been employed by the city for seven years. Rose is much more than a director of senior services. Rose is a fighter for senior citizens, for safety, for their welfare, for their rights. Rose has made it her personal crusade to ensure that our senior residents are protected. Rose fights to make sure that those seniors have proper food and shelter. Rose works tirelessly to provide ongoing programs at that center, distributing food and commodities, days, 
the day in, day out, liquid nutrition to those in the community who are in need. The work is always done, but Rose never, ever complains. Her, her passion and dedication has led her to fight for those seniors uh, from evictions, from DTE shutoffs, uh, from many things that have gone well beyond city responsibilities. She makes sure her seniors have heat in their home. She, make, she also has received gifts of warm coats in the winter to help people that she pays out of her pocket to make sure people have coats and gloves as well. Um, no one is allowed to be hungry on, on her watch. Uh, just try, good luck. There's always gonna be a pot of soup or something there, food available for them. Thank you very much, Rose, for your dedication. Uh, I can tell you that when she was just out recently from surgery, she's supposed to be home taking it easy, and I find out she's checking in every day with her seniors to make sure everything's okay because uh, God bless her, she loves those seniors and they love her and she does outstanding work. Thank you, Rose. I have one, one more addition and I'll turn the program over to our treasurer to give out their awards and, and move forward. Um, this isn't a city award, but this is from the Burkroft family. Gerald, come on up. Where's Julie Waitoko? Julie, come on up. I'd like to have you come up and recognize. Let's give Julie a round of applause. I tell you, I can't uh, thank her enough on behalf of the Burkroft family, my wife, and the family, how uh, she's made the transition uh, so easy. Uh, feel you know feel like home we feel like a little family there already but she puts in hours like you would not believe there's days I've had to say Julie go home <laughs> I mean she's she's there preparing for meetings she's uh, always looking out for the employees always looking out for the citizens and uh, I tell you what our city is blessed to have Julie White go and the support of her family thank you Julie With that, our city treasurer, Stacy Page. Come on up. I don't think she's going to make you laugh. Good evening, everyone. This is fantastic. We have our police, we have our fire, city employees, and public works. And it's a great way to start the new year, 2014. So we can acknowledge those that are working very hard um, to make this a good city. So I'm very excited about that. I have to tell you, um, coming into the treasurer's office, um, didn't know what to expect. Absolutely love my job. And what I love is the employees that I have working for me. I have some great employees. Every one of them are really good. But when I was at a staff meeting, um, they spoke about picking out that individual that goes over and beyond. And instantly, I knew right away who that person was without a doubt. That was Jeremy Taylor. When he first started in my office, I didn't know what to expect. He came from DPW. That's a whole different type of job, nothing that I could do. But I didn't know what to expect. He came in, right away I knew he was a perfect fit. He worked hard. He has the same values that I have. He believes in customer service and that's so important to me. I know that when I walk away from that department, I know that Jeremy's gonna go to that counter, I know he's gonna answer that phone and I know he's gonna give the best customer service. I can trust him. And I really believe he brings a worth work ethic that is hard to find these days. I know the city of Romulus is truly blessed to have Jeremy as an employee, and I'm even more lucky because he's working in my department. There's four words to describe Jeremy. Committed, caring, like the speaker had said, what a great quality. Jeremy is very caring. He's loyal, and he's hardworking. And I appreciate that, and he does a great job in our department. So with that being said, please come on up, Jeremy. Here I am again, it looks like this mic is going to work. All right. 
Um, I'm honored to present this award to one of the members of our team in the clerk's office. And uh, when, you know, when they had announced that they were to pick a, uh, someone from our office, and the first person that came to my mind was Ron Witten. And Barb Fitzgerald, which is our deputy clerk, we both agreed. And uh, I know Ron has been employed with the city of Romulus for 14 years. He started in the building department, and then he was in the treasurer's office and uh, for a number of years. And uh, he voluntarily came to the clerk's office, you know, in 2011 with the layoffs, and people were being bumped around into, into the offices. So, Ron wasn't sure about coming to the clerk's office. We weren't sure. Um, and so when he came in, and so we, you know, welcomed him in and began, you know, began to share a vision for the clerk's office. And um, we call ourselves a team, and we set some goals. And it's like Ron caught on to that vision. And if I throw out an idea before I realize it, it's done. Ron, he's coming with a plan. And uh, the thing that um, it was mentioned earlier about um, courage and preparation and caring, and that truly describes Ron. Um, you know, I have to tell the story. Uh, one of the things, you know, in records with the clerk's office, and we needed a records room and we needed a supply room. And again, with all the cutbacks and everybody's doing more with less, um, you know, the DPW, those guys were just stretched to the limit. And so, we discussed this in a staff meeting, and before I realized, Ron came in with this whole plan. He had sketched it out, and he said he had measurements, he had his whole site plan, and he says, Ellen, I've got this idea, and, and we could do this. I said, well, Ron, what do you need? He says, I just need a dolly. And I said, okay, and a new pair of gloves. And so what he did was create a supply room for our supplies and for our election. And one of the things is that we had uh, site plans. Site plans, it was like the invasion of site plans. They were all over the place. And what he did was take out uh, shelving that had been in a closet for years. He did it himself. He had measurements. He came up with his own site plan. And he created a room and single-handedly he labeled, he tagged, and created an index system for all of the site plans for the city of Romulus. And the one thing that's important, he did this during the eight hour day. He never came and asked for overtime to complete all of these projects. And again, and I think one thing, he's taken duct tape to a whole new level. He's created an art form of duct tape. And I'm like, Ron, how did you do that? Oh, I just used duct tape. So, um, Ron, we appreciate you so much. And can you please come up? He's here with his lovely wife, Erica. We really couldn't make it with, with, without him, and I have a poem just for you that I would like to recite. It's entitled, Hard Work. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Hope you're feeling a lot of pride and elation. Through your enthusiasm, you have learned, and our appreciation you've earned. To work with, you're a true pleasure, and your growing skills are more than treasure. You never sit, argue, or complain. <laughs> You're very thoughtful of your colleagues and not just for your own gain. You're an example and a clear sign. At the job, you know how to shine. We just want to say thank you again for your achievements are clearly a 10. Thank you, Ron, so much for all that you do. fan of the uh, University of Michigan. <laughs> if you come in the office, actually we call him Boy Blue uh, because everything on his desk is University of Michigan staplers, tape, you name it. He's got it. Thank you, Ron. I wasn't going to do this, but I can't help myself. I have to say a word or two about Rose. One of our elderly, um, one of the elderly that 
this past year passed away that attends our church. And the family wasn't stepping up to do what they needed to do to have a memorial service or a funeral of any kind for this person. And we at Romulus love this person very dearly. She was a very dear to us, you know, a, a member of this church, and a loved person at the center and at the towers. And Rose promised her before she passed that she'd have a service for her. And Rose made good on that promise. And we had a memorial service for that person. And if it wasn't for Rose, there would have never been any recognition for it all. So I thank you for that. David Allison started with Romulus Fire Department as a volunteer fighter, fighter, firefighter in 1979. He was promoted to sergeant and then captain in 1988. In 1991, he accepted a full-time position as fire marshal. In 1996, he was appointed fire chief, a position which he has held for more than 18 years. Chief Allison is a licensed EMT and is a state certified firefighter, fire officer, inspector, and investigator. He is a graduate of Eastern Michigan University School of Staff and Command. Chief Ellison serves his community as the president of Romulus Goodfellows Incorporated and has also assisted the mission group Port Out and has traveled as far as Joplin, Missouri to assist in the cleanup efforts after a devastating tornado swept that area. Would you please welcome your fire chief, David Allison. How long is this going to work? <laughs> Just kidding. First of all, I want to thank uh, Judge Oakley for opening my eyes by taking me, me to Missouri. Uh, you never realize you know, how far the boundaries stretch you know, when it comes to you know, helping people. And going out there, I mean, it, it changed my life. I mean, it really did. Just to see you know, the people working together out there and uh, a tragedy that happened to them and all the assistance that we got, I mean, it was really great, so I really appreciate that. First of all, I want to thank you, Pastor Bob, and the members of the Wesleyan Church who have invited us today for this service. Thank you also to the mayor and the administration for allowing us to recognize the various individuals tonight. I feel honored to be here with those recipients and their families. Now, determining who's going to be recognized is very difficult. The police department, fire service, just as in any, any job, it, it's, it's really difficult to get the individuals the accolades that they need because realistically, everybody deserves them. But to find the individuals who do a great job, you know, within this department, I really don't have to look far. They all make me look good. However, these are the people that would honor here tonight. First of all, for life safety, I would like Lieutenant Mike, Michael White's helpful and firefighter Tim Roman to come up to the podium, please. Well, I guess I'm going to accept this for them. Uh, basically, just to let you know, we all go out of our way, but these people definitely went out of their way on a day. <laughs> We had a uh, incident where a lady at a library had suffered a medical condition. Uh, we, they ended up responding there. They spent 45 minutes talking to her and re realistically, long and short of it, talked her out of getting in her car and driving home. They actually had to physically, you know, talk her out of home. Physically and verbally talk her out of her car after about 45 minutes. Uh, this person, if she was going to be let go down the road and drive would have probably caused a tragedy, a car accident, or other individuals would have been injured. This person was then transported to the hospital where she was treated for a condition. Um, she came back to let us know that she's doing a whole lot better, appreciated what those firefighters had done at the scene, and we very, very appreciate that they did talk her out of driving. I uh, want to thank them for their efforts. Um, they continue to do it daily. Uh, next, pe uh, people I'd like to recognize is uh, 
firefighter Michael Fife, firefighter Dan Lebowski, and firefighter Brendan uh, Rasmick. In March of the... Uh, In March of last year, they responded to an accident where an individual was having life-threatening problems. She was treated at the scene by these firefighters, saving her life. Thank you for your efforts. We appreciate it. receiving our Community Service Leadership Award. He goes over and beyond when it comes to being our community uh, relations person for the community activities and deals with a lot of prevention, fire prevention activities within the schools. He's the person I can always count on when something pops up that we need to get a uh, fire department over to a community event or to a school or anything I need, I can always count on them. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate you and thank you for your efforts. <laughs> Next, I have a, a recognition for Teamwork Award. Uh, if the C shift is here, would they please step forward? Actually, we have three different shifts uh, in the city for the fire department. They work a 24-hour shift. Uh, we have a, you know, it's called the A shift, the B shift, and the C shift. This is to uh, Lieutenant Scott Laddick, Firefighter Dan Larbeski, Firefighter Jason Pittman, and Michael Fife. Bas basically, this was a hard one to decide because they're all just as equal in performing the tasks that they do. But this is because of them, their commitment for various activities and a committal to the ice rink. When we had talked about it at first, Scott was the first to speak up and said, hey, let's take this on. So we appreciate that and we appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Jim has continuously, him and his family has given this community more than I can even speak. Uh, they help us through Goodfellas, they help us through Santa coming to town, uh, they help us through Goodfellas. Uh, every time we turn around, you know, the Pollock family is always there. Bubba's been working with the city since uh, 1974 and we appreciate everything that he's done for us. Uh, as a dispatcher, as a captain on the fire department, and just as an all-around person. Thank you, Poet family. <laughs> director John Leacher currently serves the City of Ramos as the Public Safety Director encompassing the Police, Fire, and Ordinance Departments. Director Leacher began his police career in 1987. He's worked in Romulus his entire police career when he had held the ranks of Sergeant, Lieutenant, Detective Lieutenant, Administrative Lieutenant, Executive Lieutenant, Captain, Deputy Chief, and now Public Safety Director. 
Director Leacher holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Eastern University and is a graduate of the Eastern Michigan University School of Police Staff and Command. He's also a recent graduate of the FBI National Academy, Session 251, where he also earned 15 gradual, graduate level credits from the University of Virginia. Director Leacher has been married to his wife, Betty, for almost 25 years. They have two children, Jessica and Samantha, both of whom attend Michigan State University. <laughs> Please welcome our public safety director, my friend, Captain John Leacher. Good evening. So in keeping with uh, tradition of this award ceremony from last year, I should be doing more than about another two and a half hours. <laughs> I want to keep this, this short, but it, it, um, if you're wondering why the, the mayor has been up here giving awards to everybody, he started off the ceremony doing that. In the police and fire professions especially, there's protocols set up, and it's part of our policy procedures that, the, uh, that there's certain awards that, uh, that, that officers uh, in both departments qualify for, and it's, uh, it's tradition that the, uh, the heads of those departments hand those out. So I appreciate uh, Mayor Burkrop being up here to, to still assist us with that as well. Um, I'm going to start off um, with, uh, with my ordinance department, um, and Jean Watson was called away on a family emergency, so she was not able to be with us this evening. Um, I know she wanted to be here, especially to recognize um, Kim Radcliffe, so if Kim could make her way up here, and I'll say a few words about her. <laughs> Kim is very well deserving of this award. Um, just recently, during a six-month period this year, after her partner took a medical leave, Kim worked alone responding to all animal control complaints, writing reports, caring for and adopting animals, and many other duties that come with her job. She was on call seven days a week and covered emergency calls for three cities, Romulus, Garden City, and Inkster. In addition to feeding the animals and cleaning the shelter on weekends, she did all this as well. Kim still finds time to give tours of the shelter, visit schools, teaching animal, hand animal handling and safety to kids, and I put kids in brackets because they're kids of all ages. Um, Jean says that, that Kim, and, I, and I've seen this as well, she's truly passionate about what she does. She brings the caring aspect to, to everything that she does with regard to, to, to the safety and the care of, our, of the animals in our city. So, Kim, congratulations. Next up will be our uh, departmental citations. Uh, the first recipient of uh, departmental citation is uh, Corporal Nathan Cazera. Nate? <laughs> um, on April 12th of this year, Corporal Cazera and the rest of the midnight shift responded to GM powertrain on a report of a man with a gun entering the building. Now, envision, if you will, one of those situations where as they respond and everybody's leaving, Nate and company are going in. That's the type of, the type of people that, that we are as uh, public safety officers, and that's what we respond to. So as Nate's going inside, and the officers go inside, they locate the suspect, 64-year-old man, who's seated in a work area with a handgun pointed at his head. Corporal Cazera made verbal contact with the suspect as he and other officers assumed positions of cover. Corporal Cazera established a rapport with the suspect, showed empathy and concern for the suspect's issues. During a lengthy dialogue, the suspect put the gun down and at one point picked it back up again as he was pacing back and forth. Corporal Cazera remained calm and focused, was able to get the suspect to voluntarily be taken into custody without incident. As a result of Corporal Cazera's actions, a dangerous situation was resolved without using force, which resulted in no injuries to the officers or the suspect. Congratulations, Nate. Again, we see departmental citation officer of Matthew Miracle. Matt.
This is a situation where we had uh, uh, one of our sergeants who had responded to a domestic violence situation that as the suspect uh, was leaving, uh, he rammed the uh, sergeant's vehicle by backing into his, uh, his patrol vehicle. He fled the area. Um, Officer Miracle and, uh, and his partner were the first officers that responded to, to that area. They confirmed the, the vehicle description, the suspect description with, um, with the sergeant. They then uh, pursued the, uh, the subject. They, um, they managed to get his vehicle stopped on the ramp from southbound Wayne Road going on to 94. Um, as, a result of, uh, uh, as a result of that, uh, the suspect at one point, uh, as officers were trying to, trying to uh, take him into custody, at one point uh, tried to ram, uh, actually tried to run over uh, Officer Miracle. Um, Officer Miracle, uh, as an attempt was made on his life, managed to, uh, to, to fire three rounds off, three rounds striking the suspect, uh, at which point uh, he was taken into custody. The suspect survived, was, uh, uh, was, uh, was convicted, and uh, is now in prison. Um, I just want to read what, um, what the departmental citation is, which I neglected to do earlier. It's to be awarded for outstanding performance of duty under unusual or difficult circumstances. The action need not involve exposure to physical harm, although in this case it did, but must involve unusual thoroughness, conscientiousness, determination, and initiative, and that's what the officers on that scene respond, that responded did that evening. This award generally will be appropriate for an outstanding service or act of an isolated incident, scene situation, et cetera, where an officer's actions halts or prevents further harm and or criminal activity. You know, as we all know, those types of situations where someone's willing to try to take an officer's life, they're not gonna think twice to take someone else's as a result of Officer Miracle's actions and his partner that night, um, that the subject was kept from har causing harm to anyone else. And for that, we are uh, eternally grateful. So, Matthew, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Officer Brian Perkins was also uh, is also being recognized this evening for a departmental citation. Um, he was uh, Officer Miracle's partner. Um, officer Perkins, very young officer uh, and, and very very new to the job, um, performed with admirable um, conscientiousness and maturity beyond his years. Um, both officers, um, Officer Miracle included, in, in handling that situation. Officer Perkins managed to position his patrol car against the driver's door of the suspect vehicle, in, in slowing him down at least, and, and almost stopping him from doing what he ended up ultimately doing, just trying to kill one of our officers. Uh, but the officer, his actions were very, very, very calm through the whole situation. And I don't know if anybody's seen any recent video, but sometimes you see police videos and you'll see as soon as someone starts firing, you see everybody around start shooting too, and we use those as, as, as teaching aids for in our profession, as a matter of fact, because it doesn't always mean that's what you're supposed to do. Again, Officer Perkins being a young officer, he did not fire and put his officer, he put his partner in even more jeopardy or just shoot because everybody else was, was, was shooting. I think that speaks a lot to the training that, uh, that these officers received from our FTOs as well as just their level of professionalism as well. So um, we will make sure that Officer Perkins gets, uh, gets his award for that. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, awards that we're handing out uh, are for command leadership. Um, the first one will go to uh, Sergeant Sawa, who again couldn't be here this evening. He had some personal uh, commitments that he was not able to get out of. Sergeant Sawa was the officer I mentioned before. He was uh, the officer that was felonious assaulted by that, uh, by that suspect by ramming his vehicle into Sergeant Sawa's. Sergeant Sawa not only had one scene there, but then responded to assist the officers involved in the shooting, had another <coughs> scene there. Sergeant Sawa, although several years on the job, was a new sergeant, new command officer. He, again, with, with maturity beyond his years as a command officer, took charge of two scenes and managed to make sure that both those scenes were processed, preserved, attended to properly with incredible thoroughness, conscientiousness, and again, calmness and professionalism. And I just wanted to make sure that he gets, uh, he gets recognized as well. Um, going along with that uh, command leadership award, uh, the second command leadership award that we're presenting this evening is going to go to uh, Lieutenant Phil Zernick. I'm going to read the uh, 
No, I'm not going to read the Command Leadership Award. The Command Leadership Award is given to uh, a sergeant or a lieutenant, and it's pretty much at the discretion of the awards committee as to what action that they've taken that, uh, that prompted that uh, prompted that award. Um, again, Lieutenant Zernick, he coordinated, and, and I, I remember responding that evening, and I remember asking him, what do you need, what do you need me to do? And he said, I got it under control. I'm sure he, I, under control for, for, for you and I is when we've got can handle one thing at one time. For Phil, it's handling 25 things at one time with three phones sticking out of his ear and running up and down the hall, getting people, giving people direction, and getting everybody where they need to go. And he did that again in this situation. And again, for situations when you've got calls of shots fired and an officer down, because Officer Miracle was hurt, I don't know if I mentioned that, um, when that suspect tried to run him over, he, uh, he actually did run over, run over his leg and cause an injury that, 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 that took Matt out of service with us for a while. But you know, while all that's going on, again, with, with ex extreme professionalism and a great amount of, of calmness and thoroughness, Phil was managed, managed to do with Roger to get people where they needed to be and make sure that everything was taken care of. Our people were safe and our people were taken care of as well as the scene and as well as the suspect. So, uh, Lieutenant Zernick, congratulations and thank you very much. Our next award is the Distinguished Service Award. Uh, the recipient of that award, um, again, although not able to be with us this evening, is uh, Corporal Tommy Westhoff. Um, I'm sure that several of you have seen some of the stuff that he's doing on, uh, on his Facebook, uh, on Facebook and through a, uh, a group that, that he pioneered called Relentless. It's uh, uh, through weightlifting competitions, they raise money for, uh, for, for kids that, um, that, that have life-threatening or, or life-changing diseases. Um, it, it's incredible work that they do. Um, and it's kind of that combined with his day-to-day -day professionalism that he brings to the job. He's been one of our FTOs for years. He's trained several FTOs or several officers in our department that have gone on to be FTOs themselves. Um, the Distinguished Service Award is awarded for exceptional continuous meritorious service throughout the year, involving but not limited to outstanding and honorable performance in the areas of teamwork, determination, productivity, commitment, fairness, courageousness, and compassion in the regular, everyday efforts, working as an officer for and in our community. It's no secret to anybody involved with Relentless that Tommy's a police officer with the city of Romulus. And it's no secret to anybody that knows Tommy that when he puts his, when he puts his heart into something, he gives it 110%. I think that he is most deserving of this award. He represents not only, not only himself outside, outside of, uh, of the job, but, but in, in, within the job and day-to-day -day work as well. So the um, Distinguished Service Award is going to be presented to uh, Corporal Tommy Westhoff. <laughs> Next up for the Police Department is the Chief Distinguished Service Award. Um, the Chief Distinguished Service Award is an award that's uh, presented um, on at the sole discretion of the Chief of Police, the personnel that he or she deems to have made exemplary contributions to the department by way of their outstanding work ethic, personal integrity, compassion, vision, dedication, and personal sacrifice in making the RPD a better, more prosperous, prosperous, and more professional police department. First recipient of that award is uh, Lieutenant Damian Hall. David, good to you for Lieutenant Hall's one of those kind of people that you just, you just can't say no. Um, he always tried to do anything he asked of them, and he has the energy to spare at the end of the day. Um, honor Guard, he's, he coordinates our Honor Guard. He's an Evans Tech super, Supervisor, uh, Use of Force Instructor, our most recent Excel expert. Uh, there's not much that he can't do or can't figure out how to do if he's given enough time. Um, some, sometimes, uh, we, we, we kind of joke with him a little bit, sometimes he gets so into all the extra assignments that he kind of loses track of his day-to-day -day responsibilities, but you know we're working on that. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, um, Lieutenant Hall is one of those people that that in, in, when he sees something that needs to be done or sees something that he thinks he can make better, he doesn't necessarily ask permission to do it or or wait. He just goes ahead and does it. And uh, that type of initiative and those types of people that that make make your, your organization more professional on a day-to-day -day basis are the kind of individuals that you really can't live without. And um, honestly, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, what Damien offers to the, to the police department, I don't know that we could live without it. So, Damien, congratulations and thank you.
And our, our next uh, recipient of the Chief Distinguished Service Award is going to go to uh, Karen, a.k.a. Susie Toner. Okay. Karen Toner, a proud employee of the city, was chosen for this award as a result of her hard work and relentless motivation to improve herself, both personally and professionally, on and off the job. She continually promotes our mission and mandate, which is to service our citizens with integrity, honor, respect, and compassion. As Secretary of the Investigative Services Bureau, Karen has helped to improve several new methods of tracking information, which have resulted in increased efficiency in the Detective Bureau. For instance, Karen has developed spreadsheets that monitor war arrests, crime statistics, caseload management, media releases, and overtime. She serves as our liaison between the courts, city prosecutor, county prosecutor, and our towing companies. She uses her interpersonal communication skills to help solve problems without being asked. She assists not only the detectives, but also willingly supports and assists any employee or citizen in need of help. Karen continues to represent the department and her community by having a reputation of being optimistic, honest, dependable, unselfish, and helpful. She's not afraid to take on new tasks, as seen through her willingness to assist with cleaning tasks, even though it is outside of her job description. She doesn't like a dirty work area at all. Um, she's, she, her exemplary performance and dedication is truly deserving of this honor and recognition. And let me tell you, when it comes to somebody, again, that you don't have to, you don't have to light a fire, she's, she's there and she's ready to go every day, all day long. Um, we really appreciate having her. So, Karen, congratulations and thank you. So, so rather than a plaque, and we're kind of keeping in tradition here, we did we started this last year. Uh, last year, the recipient of this award was uh, Joyce Clay. Uh, she's an administrative aide to, the, to, to me now. She was to uh, our chief of staff, staff uh, Robert Dickerson, last year. Um, we, we got a vase for her, and it simply says, uh, uh, Robbins Police Department, Hometown Heroes Award Ceremony, Karen Toner, Chief's Distinguished Service Award, 2013. And of course, the vase can't go uh, with being empty, so we got some flowers for you to go along with that as well. Oh, thank you. That would be her boss who, uh, who, who more echoes more than anybody else that he can to without her so. <laughs> our next award is going to be presented to our Detective of the Year. So Detective Carolyn Harkins could come up. <laughs> this is the second year in a row for Robert Kiel to receive this award. She won the award last year as well, so uh, it's quite an accomplishment for her. It's in recognition for her consistent work ethic throughout the year and has helped the Ramos Police Department secure well over 100 felony warrants from the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Her outstanding follow-up shows in each and every case she is assigned. One very noteworthy case that comes to mind is the murder investigation that we investigated on Cherry Street. Detective Harkins symbolizes outstanding professional ethics, dedication to duty, and a concern for crime victims. For the second year in a row, she was elect selected for this award because of her exemplary work performance, selfless behavior, and because she consistently exceeds expectations and delivers excellent service to her citizens, both on and off the job. You will never hear her complain about her job or any assignment she's given because she's a true professional and performs at the very highest level. As you can see, Detective Carolyn Harkins exemplifies the RPD mission statement and has brought honor to the Ramos Police Department by way of her performance and dedication and is truly deserving of this honor and recognition. Carolyn, congratulations. So now she has her second plaque with a magnifying glass mounted to it, which is a special award for Detective Junior. Next up is going to be our, our Reserve Officer of the Year Award. This is a new, uh, new award that we, we started this year. Um, as you know, we uh, recently um, brought on our first group of Reserve Officers. And um, I just like all of them, even though we're going to recognize one in particular, I'd like to recognize the whole group for a second, if, we, if, if everybody can, could just indulge me. If everybody here that's in our Reserve Park can just come up and just, just kind of stand down here so everybody can, can see you guys. 
kind of winging this, but I think that they're deserving of some recognition here. So. Sergeant Derek Turner, he is a supervisor over the, uh, the reserve, our reserve officers, and I'm going to ask him to make his way up here as well because he can say a few words for just a second. What, what I want to say um, before it's kind of a lead is that when you think of, of hometown, hometown heroes and you think about, about what that means, and, and in my opinion, what, what being, being heroic is, is it's, it's, it's standing up for, for, for something that you, you believe in and, and giving of yourself for others, and um, I don't think anything exemplifies that more than what these guys down in front of me do right here. Because there's no there's no pay incentive for this. This is simply a love for their community and a desire to serve all of you. So um, I think that again, I think it's 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 appropriate that we, we recognize all of them. I'm going to turn the mic over to Sergeant Turner. Good evening, 2013 former Chief of Police Dickerson decided to bring back the reserve regiment and boy did he ever bring back the regiment. These guys are highly trained and hope that they, these, what you see in front of you is the future of Rollins Police Department because they hope, each and every one of them hope and dream to be a Rollins Police Officer and they're well on their way. Um, at one point, uh, on his third day on the job, the young man on, the, on, my, on my right at the end, Sam Wapuda, Third day on the job, we arrested three and got a gun off the street. And did, we, did the chief mention that these are volunteers? They all decided to put on a uniform and say, I would gladly put my life in jeopardy in the protection of others. But one young man here exemplifies everything we all want in this police department. And that would be our, our reserve officer, Ross Haynack. He is always put in, he has put in so many hours here. Anytime we needed him for anything, he was always there, whether it was a basketball game or anything. So Ross, because of your outstanding service, please accept our award for Reserve Officer of the Year. Don't cry on me, man. Don't cry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You can uh, have a seat now. Thanks, Sergeant Turner. I'd like to echo what uh, what Sergeant Turner said about Ross. Ross is, I think, he puts in more hours than uh, than, than I do, and I put in a lot of hours. So um, he's he's there an, an awful lot, and always with a smile on his face, always willing to do anything that's asked of him, and then some. So I really do appreciate not only his efforts, but the efforts of the entire reserve group. So thanks, guys. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, our unit citation. Um, and I'm going to ask if uh, Captain Shelby, our school resource officers, uh, LeBrick Jackson, Keith Haynes, uh, Detective Manners, Detective Harkins, Detective Frog could uh, make their way up to the, the podium as I uh, let everybody know what you're going to be recognized for. We don't have to go back too far and remember that uh, in a very short period of time, um, we kind of got struck with a couple of two, two, two very serious heinous crimes. Um, the first was a home invasion and a sexual assault of a 72-year-old female resident. The second was a murder. These officers, to my left, worked tirelessly for two weeks to apprehend and successfully charge the suspect in the first crime, only to be called in the day before his arraignment for a murder. I'm going to set the stage for a little bit on this. When you put in those kind of hours on a serious case, you, when you get everything done and you know you're going to get them charged, you almost get this sense of, ah, you know, like you can breathe again for a minute. They didn't get a chance to even catch their breath, and they get called in for a murder. So rather than complain about the lack of rest or not seeing their families for such a long period of time, each and every one of these officers came back to work, somehow maintained that same level of energy and intensity it takes to get the job done. The outstanding work done by these officers resulted in the murder suspect being arrested within 48 hours. An update was given at a city council meeting on both incidents, 
and a grateful gathering of residents seated in council chambers applauded, literally, the efforts of all the investigators involved in getting two dangerous criminals off the street. Crimes were solved, but more importantly, safety and a sense of peace were quickly restored to our community. This kind of work and dedication is reflective of each, reflective of, each of the core values found in our mission statement, integrity, honor, respect, compassion, professionalism, trust, and confidence. To an elderly woman who refuses to be labeled a victim and the loved ones of a murdered man, these officers to my left are heroes. Congratulations. Is uh, Stacy Frolic in the audience? Okay, if Stacy can step up here. Um, I'm going to read a letter. Um, one of the, uh, one of the, and I'm not going to say victim. I'm going to say person that was involved in one of the crimes I just mentioned. We were going to have her here tonight to uh, to, to present the award that I just presented. Um, she couldn't make it, and, but she's also receiving an award, um, a certificate of, uh, of recognition and appreciation. So I'd like to read something that she wrote. Um, in, in, in absence of her being able to be here, and then I'm going to present the, uh, the recognition certificate to, uh, to her friend Stacy. Um, she says, uh, please know how much this recognition means to me and that it is unfortunate that weather and physical challenges prevent me from attending. My friend Stacy Frolic is representing me today. I would like to acknowledge and recognize the people who have helped me through this difficult time, starting with the 911 operator who took my call for help on September 10, 2013. Her calm voice assured me the police were on the way. Several officers arrived simultaneously and began searching the yard, house, and garage. The respect and dignity shown to me by those officers will never be forgotten. Their concern for my well-being was obvious and included my two beloved dogs, making sure I was as comfortable as possible under the circumstances. Officer Hayes stayed with me until my friends Kay Stoll, Kim Harrison, and Stacy Frolic arrived. I was transported to Annapolis Hospital for observation, and later that morning, Detective Carolyn Manners and Carolyn Harkins came to the hospital. Again, their compassion was evident. Detective Manners has been available for questions, concerns, or support whenever needed. That evening, Officer Jackson and his two sons stopped by my house with a card and flowers. Kindness personified. Early on Tuesday, September 17th, Deputy Chief John Leacher came to the house to tell me the person had been taken into custody. He assured me I was now part of the family that could turn to the police department any time for assistance. My comfort level increased substantially with that visit. Another person who has been very important in the healing process is Linda Jackson from Wayne County Safe. Linda has been available for counseling, comforting, and just talking when the need arises. Linda has been with me to offer support for two court appearances. My friends have provided an incredible support system, making sure my physical and emotional needs were attended to. At times, putting their lives on hold to be with me on the court days or staying nights with me, one even coming from Florida, or straining my house after the incident. All of them so impressed with the Rymas Police Department and their handling of this case. Words cannot adequately express my gratitude to the police department, my friends, and my neighbors for their continued support. You are the heroes in my life. Thank you, and it's signed Mary Lou Pate. The award, or the, the, the certificate of recognition that we're presenting to her reads as follows. It's a certificate of meritorious service, a civilian appreciation award. It's awarded to Ms. Mary Lou Pate for courage, bravery, determination, and the refusal to be a victim in the face of extreme danger, and for your outstanding assistance to the Romans Police Department in the apprehension of the heinous perpetrator of the crimes committed against you. Okay, this leads us up to our, our final award of the evening, which is our Police Officer of the Year Award. Wait, I missed one, didn't I? I missed a rest leader, didn't I? All right, let me do a rest leader first. Um, our rest leader this year is, uh, again, a repeat, uh, a repeat recipient 
um, Officer Matthew Miracle, if you could make your way up. Um, Officer Miracle, we, we traditionally with this award we we take um, we take the handcuffs of the officer um, that he used throughout the year and we mount them on the plaque. Um, this year, and I, I don't know what the number was from last year, I apologize, but uh, this year, Officer Matthew Miracle is a 2013 RPD arrest leader with 248 arrests for the year. Um, again, as stated before, Matt, uh, Matt missed some time with that injury as a result of, uh, of that, uh, that suspect trying to run over the car. He still bounces back. He still ends up getting uh, get the most arrests. He's recently been assigned to our traffic unit. He is uh, obviously part of our honor guard. Uh, Matt is involved in as much as, as, as he can get involved with, with the department. Represents us at the highest level of professionalism. And I just want to say, Matt, that this is your ploy to not just spend your uniform allowance on getting new handcuffs every year. I'm all for it. Keep it up. <laughs> Um, our next award is uh, the MAD Award. Uh, typically, is uh, or the, the MAD, uh, um, MAD stands for Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That's for the most uh, OUIL arrests or drunk driving arrests for the year. And that award's gonna go to uh, Jason Otter. Jason. <laughs> this award consists of a, uh, a red ribbon, which is the symbol for MAD, as well as uh, the plaque, which uh, State's Romans Police Department 2013 Hometown Hero Award, Officer Jason Otter, 2013 RPD Mad Award. Uh, Jason had 47 drunk driving arrests this year. Um, I'm going to preface that with, I don't believe that Jason um, was able to count the full year from get-go because he was being trained for part of that year, as well as was injured and missed a couple weeks on top of that, and still managed to, uh, to, to outpace his nearest competition, who... Uh, who I, I think, I don't know if they'll admit it, but I think they were really working hard to try to, try to beat each other out. So, uh, Jason, congratulations, good job. And now to the, uh, to the last award of the evening from the police department, um, our police officer of the year, um, Officer Ryan Miller. To start off, Ryan is the nearest competition to, uh, to Jason in the drunk driving category. Ryan has been, uh, been training one of our new recruits, and, uh, and when they started the month of December, which is why we had to wait to the last minute to give, this, give our, 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 trophy, uh, our trophy maker, the, 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 the MAD recipient's name, um, because there were only four rests separating them. And I remember Ryan, I talked to them in roll call one night, I was in working late and they were in roll call. And I said, so I said, I don't know who's ahead at that time. I think Jason was still ahead. Okay, so I said, so I look at Ryan, you're not gonna let him beat you, are you? And he said, oh, you know, I'm training somebody, so I'm just gonna let him have it. And sure enough, I look and he's arresting like four drunks in a week, and he's arresting five, and then he's arresting two, and he's arresting one. I'm like, they do not let him get anything from him. He's trying his best to beat him. So um, I, I appreciate that level of uh, that level of competition, but but more importantly, it's that level of competition, that spirit of competition that um, that, that that makes it makes it enjoyable for these guys to go out and have a good relationship with each other and, and work hard to keep our, uh, keep our streets safe and, and keep our residents safe. So I appreciate that. Um, Officer Miller is a valued member of the police department's field training program. Shortly after completing training as a field training officer, he volunteered to update the FTO training manual. He has often talked to, into sharing his encyclopedic knowledge on many topics with his coworkers. Officer Miller looks to grow as an officer and become a more valuable employee by volunteering for advanced training. He has an associate's degree and a bachelor's degree from Madonna University. Officer Miller has a great attendance record, demonstrates strong ethical beliefs. He believes there's only one way to do something, and that's the right way, giving 100% effort 100% of the time. One time he took the time during a very busy shift to check out a suspicious vehicle, despite his patrol car running on fumes. The driver of the suspicious vehicle was identified and later turned out to be the getaway driver for a home invasion armed robbery crew. Officer Miller finished second for the department in OWI arrests and, over, and also overall arrests. We were very close, he's very close to getting three awards tonight. 
Um, he was also near the top in several other measured areas of performance, such as runs taken and traffic stops. Both of these areas show strong independent motivation. And as a, uh, as kind of a side note, the recipient, of, and this is kind of a personal, personal note for me, um, we take the badge, uh, we take the badge for this award from the officer's uniform, the actual badge that he wore all year. We mount that in a, in a, in a plaque, and I'm going to show you that plaque in a second. But the kind of the, the neat thing for me with this is the badge that's being mounted in that plaque is badge number 30. That's the first badge that I wore when I hired into this police department over 26 years ago, and that's the actual badge. The badge that's being worn by the recipient of the award last year, who can be here tonight, Sergeant Sawa, his sergeant's badge number is badge number 15. That's also the same badge I wore as a sergeant, so I kind of feel honored here with these two guys. <laughs> portion of the award ceremony. We have one more very special award tonight. This person is very deserving of this award, wouldn't you say, Mayor? Absolutely. You know, this person not only uh, has the core values and exemplifies, uh, you know, outstanding customer service, uh, uh, True, true, just run this guy all the way through and does a great job. But we, you know, we all work hard. We're working hard. We're getting a lot of good things done. And he's the one guy on the team that always keeps it light, too, and, and holds us in check to make sure we're not just working hard, but we're having fun working. So with that, Bobby Dickerson, would you come forward, please? <laughs> can't see this, this is, a, this is a pot, and it says City of Romulus Pot Stirrer Award. If, if you don't know Robert Dickerson, he is a, he's a great man, he brings a ton to our community, we're blessed to have him, but he keeps us in check and makes sure that we're working, we're having fun, and we're staying focused. So with that, first annual Pot Stirrer Award. Say instigator on there too. <laughs> God is good, amen? amen. We have just a few things left. Uh, we're going to have two closing, three closing prayers actually. One is the police prayer. The other is the fire pr fire uh, prayer uh, that would be given by Sergeant Derek Turner and Fire Lieutenant John Thee. And uh, then we're going to have a blessing of the meal after that by uh, Reverend Terry Edwards, um, a closing prayer slash blessing of the meal. And then uh, we'll have a dismissal by the color guard. And I just want to remind you of one thing before we get into that, and that is this, a week from this Monday, is Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And there's a big parade that day, that morning, correct? What time does that start? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, and there's a breakfast at seven, correct? Middle school. We start at the middle school at 7:30 for coffee. Then we walk from the middle school down the way to Wayne, make a ride into the high school for a celebration there. Pancake breakfast put on by the Rotary, and then we are eat uh, uh, there. And then about 9:30 the program will start. I just spoke with Congressman, uh, Congressman, 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 Congress, that he's not in Washington. Romans would love to have him just be a keynote speaker for free, but we can't pay him. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for us. We're going to let you know if you check your schedule and see if he's available for that, for that day. Come and speak for us on that grand day. So everybody's invited. Please come out and have a great time and celebrate the great man and the great life of the great city. And he just reminded me that he's the author of the bill that went through. So what a real blessing to have him come with that. That's a blessing. Also, all those who received uh, an award tonight, would you please stay behind for a group photo. Thank you.
So with all that said, would uh, Sergeant Derek Turner please come forward to offer the policeman's prayer. These prayers for all heroes, not just police, not just fire, but mothers, fathers, teachers, everyone. Lord, we ask for courage, courage to face our own fears, courage to take us where others will not go. We ask for strength, strength of body to protect others and strength of spirit to lead others. Lord, we ask for dedication, dedication to our job, to do it well, dedication to our community, to keep it safe. Give us more concern for others who trust us and compassion for those who need us. And Lord, please, through it all, be at our side. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And Fire Lieutenant John T. And we bow our heads, please. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may range, give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to my fate I am to lose my life, please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. As uh, Reverend Terry Everett comes forward, I just want to remind you, uh, as he offers the closing prayer and the blessing in the meal, there is a meal. Uh, there's several people across the street at Progressive Hall that have been working tirelessly all day to provide a really nice meal over there. Please stay and uh, fellowship with us across the street. Before I go into the prayer, I would like to say one thing. As a retired fireman myself, public servant, I want to commend each and every one of you for what you've done for our city. May we bow our heads. Most Heavenly Father, as we come before you as humbly as we know how, we come this day, Heavenly Father, asking your blessings over these individuals and the things that they have done for our community, Heavenly Father. We ask in you to continue to walk with them. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge to continue the work that they're doing, Heavenly Father. Be with them, help them. And a blessing upon our community, Heavenly Father. And let us, Heavenly Father, work with these individuals when we come before them. Because we know as public servants, Heavenly Father, sometimes it can get very trying to deal with the individual public. So Heavenly Father, continue to work along with us. And now for the blessing of the food, Heavenly Father. We ask a blessing upon this meal that's been prepared for this occasion, Heavenly Father. And a blessing upon each and every individual that worked so diligently to make this possible. These and all blessings, Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please rise for the color guard? Oh, uh, huh. All right. Hey. 